gentlemen, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghid announces that Arab countries would not accept the dissolution of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA. The United States announces its decision to immediately close the Palestine Liberation Organization's diplomatic mission in Washington, citing the ongoing refusal of the Palestinian leadership to participate in U.S.-led efforts to broker a peace agreement with Israel. U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton threatened the Assad regime once again to avoid all use of chemical weapons in the upcoming Idlib offensive, vowing to respond much stronger than ever before. Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu Ghid announced that the Arab countries would not accept the dissolution of UNRWA, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees. The Arab League Secretary General claimed that while the ultimate goal of the U.S. policy is to undermine the legitimacy of UNRWA and the U.N. mandate granted to it in order to settle the Palestinian refugee issue, the Muslim world will not allow the dismantling of the agency or replacing it with alternative entities a goal which Abu Ghid claimed is sought after by both Israel and the United States. The statement by the Secretary General came during a meeting in Cairo last night with UNRWA Commissioner General Pierre Krahenboul, who presented the Arab League's chief with an overview of the organization's crisis following the United States' decision to suspend its financial contribution to the agency in light of UNRWA's unwillingness to concede to Washington's calls for reform. Rather than complying with U.S. demands, Krahenbull went on the defensive, urging the international community to close the organization's financial shortfall, which amounts to some $446 million, equal to some 383 million euros. This visit uh, and this opportunity to address the League of Arab States is uh, very important at this critical time for UNRWA. We face an unprecedented financial crisis since the announcement by the United States in January that it would cut 300 million US dollars from its contribution to UNRWA and then the recent announcement by the United States on the 31st of August that it would no longer support UNRWA financially. This is a critical time and we have decided that it's essential for us to close the historic shortfall that we faced of 446 million U.S. dollars by reaching out to many other countries and among them member states of the League of Arab States. The call for support came ahead of the Arab League's 150th session that convened today in Egypt at the ministerial level with an emphasis on supporting UNRWA. Among others, Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Qatar pledged to contribute to the UN agency $50 million each. While the UN official thanked the Gulf countries for their support, he emphasized that it was not enough to sustain operations until the end of 2018. The money will come from, uh, in light of the fact that uh, Gulf countries have really mobilized very actively and that we have several in the Asian context, but also some of our European partners that have come forward. We are very much hoping in this phase that uh, there are, between some of the other Gulf countries uh, and uh, European partners beyond, including the European Union, who are already very generous donors, but who could consider uh, providing additional support in this time of uh, really existential crisis. That is uh, sort of the key targets that we're currently focusing on. Now to a related matter, the United States announced its decision to immediately close the Palestine Liberation Organization's diplomatic mission in Washington, citing the ongoing refusal of the Palestinian leadership to participate in U.S.-led efforts to broker a peace agreement with Israel. U.S. State Department spokeswoman Heather Neuer said the decision followed a review of the Office of the Palestine Liberation Organization, which centered on the fact that no direct and meaningful negotiations with Israel are underway, despite previous warnings, a decision condemned by the Palestinian leadership as the Trump administration's determination to continue its policies of blackmail and extortion. We notified officially that they will close the office and lower the Palestinian flag. And this is an, an affirmation of the U.S. Uh, administration's determination uh, to continue its policies of blackmail and extortion uh, and undermining the peace process and the two-state solution. 
Meanwhile, President Donald Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, in an address to the Federalist Society in Washington, revealed that among other reasons mentioned, the decision to close the PLO office in Washington also took into account Palestinian attempts to prompt an international criminal court investigation of Israel at a time when the judiciary separately looks into civilian casualties and allegations of torture by the United States military in Afghanistan. The court's decision to look into allegations against the U.S. that was announced last November prompted a decision by the Trump administration to end all cooperation with the international court. Today, on the eve of September the 11th, I want to deliver a clear and unambiguous message on behalf of the President of the United States. The United States will use any means necessary to protect our citizens and those of our allies from unjust prosecution by this illegitimate court. We will not cooperate with the ICC. We will provide no assistance to the ICC. And we certainly will not join the ICC. We will let the ICC die on its own. After all, for all intents and purposes, the ICC is already dead to us. In response to the American decision to close the PLO's diplomatic mission in Washington, the head of the Palestinian delegation to the United States declared that the move would only motivate the Palestinians to double their efforts against Israel within the United States and legal international institutions. This is just a confirmation for us that we need to double our efforts both in the ICC, in the international organs, using international law, and also double our efforts in the U.S. to address and engage with the American people. Palestinian officials have demanded a full investigation into Israel at the International Criminal Court in The Hague over alleged human rights violations spanning over the last four years, a demand the international judiciary announced it would consider. Now, with regard to the intensified bombings of Syria's northwestern province of Idlib, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton threatened the Assad regime once again to avoid all use of chemical weapons in the upcoming offensive, vowing to respond much stronger than ever before. When asked about claims by Russia and other allies of the Assad regime that Islamist organizations were staging chemical weapons attacks to draw an international response against Damascus, Ambassador Bolton referred to these allegations as one of the most outrageous claims in propaganda efforts in the 20th and 21st centuries. Uh, the government of Russia and others have said that we are giving the authorization for al-Qaeda uh, to use chemical weapons uh, and try and pin it on the government of Syria. Uh, that has to be in the, in the uh, history of propaganda in the 20th and 21st centuries, one of the most uh, outrageous claims that that I can think of. Meanwhile, in Geneva, UN Special Envoy for Syria Staffan de Mistura met with senior officials from Turkey, Iran, and Russia this morning for talks on the formation of Syria's Constitutional Committee. The delegations include Iran's special assistant to the foreign minister, Hossein Jaberi Ansari, the Russian president's envoy to Syria, Alexander Lavrentiev, Russia's deputy foreign minister, Sergei Vershinin, and the Deputy Foreign Minister of Turkey, Sedat Onal. Following today's meeting with the representatives of Russia, Iran and Turkey, Demistura is also scheduled to meet senior representatives from the United States, Britain, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Germany, France and Egypt on the 14th of September to continue the United Nations push for a new Syrian constitution. Thank you for watching us. Praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. Jonathan Hassan, have a Erev Tov, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.